This video follows my earlier video, which was a rant about charity collectors in Bedford, specifically about the tactics employed by this person. That video was the get mad part. This video is the get even part. Hello, I live in Bedford and have been watching your street collectors at work in the town centre. I disapprove of their dishonest and manipulative practices and I made a video to illustrate them, which you can see here. I know nothing about your charity, but I assume you are dedicated people doing very good work for a needy cause. The video makes no comment about that, but in my view the end does not justify the means, and as you may know, the charity world is receiving very poor press from its disgusting practices in recent years. This, to me, seems like more of the same. If you feel there's anything untrue or inaccurate in the video or its description, I welcome your pointing it out, and I will correct it. If you have a comment to make on the video, or the opinions it expresses, I am willing to consider including those in the video description, if you would like me to. Aside from all of that, I'm interested to know what your opinion of the video is. Regards. This kind of email almost never works, but it's a necessary step you have to take before going further. So here's the first alarm bell, that phrase, I'm sorry that you feel. It looks like an apology because it's got the word sorry in it, but it's not an apology, it's just an acknowledgement that they have heard that you feel fed up. Um, it doesn't explore their culpability in any matter at all, and in my view, it's a platitude and it's disingenuous. This bit's polite but content free. This part of the response contains two problems. The first is that they are suggesting I'm taking issue with face-to-face -face fundraising, which I'm not. I'm taking issue with aggressive tactics. The second is that this is a means to an end argument. They're saying if we didn't do this, we wouldn't have much money. So I wrote back to them and pointed those things out, and they chose not to reply. The fundraising regulator oversees charitable collection in the UK it's a two million pound a year organization funded mostly by charities so I wrote to them sending a link to the video and asking them to consider it as a formal complaint and these are their findings we found that the charity did not properly investigate and respond to the complaint and in doing so they did not act respectfully we also found that the charity do properly monitor their third party fundraisers that one might need explaining Many charities don't have their own collectors, they employ an agency who are trained to collect for any charity, kind of mercenary type deal. In this case, the agency concerned was PFS, Personal Fundraising Services. We found that in most of their interactions with members of the public, the agency's fundraisers were not causing a nuisance to the public and were courteous. Now I think this conclusion is incorrect and they have no basis on which to draw that conclusion but that's the subject for another video. However, we found in one instance the agency's fundraiser had continued to ask a person for support after they had clearly indicated that they were not interested and in doing so were unreasonably persistent and placed undue pressure on a person to donate. I believe they're referring to this lady here. We found that the agency had not identified all the relevant learning from the complaint. The agency went on to make some recommendations, which I'll abbreviate here. The charity should deal with complaints better. Provide a letter of apology to me. The agency should make sure fundraisers back off long before this person did. Review their compliance to the code when receiving complaints. The regulator indicated that both the charity and the agency accepted these findings and recommendations. Well, here is that apology. They acknowledge that they should have answered my second email, and I am assured that Miss Ponytail has been retrained, and this complaint placed on her record. Well, okay, so far so good, but all is not well. My original video focused on one charity collector who I called Ponytail, but the complaint itself was about all of the collectors there on this occasion. Here's Miss Puce doing Ponytail's canter. Look at this treacherous ploy. Sit your children down there, and then try and run away. I've got them, you can't, you're trapped. And whilst I'm not showing it all here, these people were trapped for a very long time. 
Here's another beckoning canter. You wouldn't rudely ignore such a lovely lady and embarrass her, would you? No, that's why you're trapped. <laughs> gotcha. And here's a piece of charming footwork. So yeah, they were all at it on that day. In the fundraising regulator's final report, they concluded that Ponytail was the exception rather than the rule and that she was the only one misbehaving. But the evidence of this video um, completely refutes that. When I asked the regulator what evidence they had to make that conclusion, they said, astonishingly, the evidence of the agency and the charity. Well, that's a bit like asking the accused if they're guilty or not and taking their answer as evidence. Anyway, there were some other serious issues with the fundraiser um, regulator which I'll be taking up in another video. Also the subject for another video will be the second prong of this attack, uh, which is the work I did with Bedford Borough Council to get this charity off the street. But, for whatever reason, and perhaps because of these reasons, there has been an amazing development in Bedford, and that is that since this complaint was processed, um, there have been no charity collectors on the streets of Bedford. Um, there have been precious sellers for utilities, um, broadband and so on, um, but there have been no chuggers, so I'm rather pleased with that. Resistance, Resistance is not, 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 not.